and thank you for watching Sahara TV. Now, in Uganda, a top newspaper called the Daily Monitor has been shut down by the government for releasing documents that discuss assassination plots of those who oppose the current leadership of President Yoweri Museveni. Now, we have on the phone here with us today uh, Tabu Butagera, who's calling from Skype, sorry, um, and he's going to discuss basically what's going on there. So let's go straight to him. Tabu, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Tracy. Great, great. Thank you for being with us. Um, so let's just go straight to it. Can you just explain to us basically what's happening there? Yeah, what happened is that on Monday this week, the police raided uh, the head offices of newspapers, the Daily Monitor, and tablet called the Red Paper, both of which are currently owned. The police said they had secured uh, such warrant court to search the two places in order to look for documents. The court uh, such warrant does not specify what type of document, and they took the positions or the premises of the two media organizations about midday on Monday and held the staff at either places in the tertiary who could be able to leave the premises uh, many states without food up until between 6 and 7 p.m. evening when they were allowed to go. And an exit, each person was sad. When the police took over uh, the premises, they blocked all the access, so no people were being allowed to get in. Not gotten, they were not able to leave up until late in the evening. Mm -hmm. the, the, the police are looking for in the monitors, in the case of the Daily Monitor, which rises on the same block, also houses its sister radio stations, KFM, and the in the FM whose operations have since been shut down. They said they were looking for a copy of the letter. The newspaper used to publish a story on the 7th of May. And that particular story was based on a letter allegedly written by General uh, Setusa, uh, who was previously called Chinyefosa. In the letter he, he wrote to his subordinate, the Director General of the Security Organization, which is Uganda's domestic spy agency. He raised the issue for investigation to the effect that senior government officials were being targeted by senior colleagues for elimination because of perceived opposition to uh, rumored attempts by President Museveni to help his son Mohozi kind of rather succeed him as president. Uh, this letter, according to the Daily Monitor report of May 7, the persons who are connected to the nation include Tina uh, himself, the country's prime minister, and also the chief of defense forces, General Aronda Nakairima. Okay, uh, let me, uh, let me just, um, so, can, so we can just make sure that everyone sort of understands what you're saying. Um, you're saying that a top military official was the producer of this document, right? Yes, this letter was authored by a very senior military officer. She is called General David Tinefuga, and she's a formal position is the coordinator of intelligence services. Mm -hmm. In other words, she's the country's top most spy master. Mm -hmm. She is a member, she represents the Ugandan army in the parliament, and she's also a member of the high command of the army, and a member of the historical, meaning that she is one of the uh, decorated war heroes who fought in the national resistance army uh, rebel or guerrilla war between 1981 and 1986, which eventually brought President Joe and Soviet to power. Okay. okay, and just just to be clear, the report that you guys produced or and released um, from his mouth said that these people will be um, assassinated, or like what what was the wording within the report that was came from him? It it it, it, it isn't a report. It was an internal letter, an official letter from the top most spy master to one of his subordinates to investigate allegations that three top government officials were being targeted for assassination by colleagues because the trio is understood to have been opposed to uh, rumored attempts to have the president's son succeed him. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. So talk about what's happening there today. I mean, we've been watching what's going on and just reading uh, what's going on. But can you just talk about the scene today? I mean, are they, you know, using certain types of force to remove you guys or what's happening today? Well, what, what happened today, obviously, is, is first of all, the, the two newspapers, the main newspapers, because remember that each of these newspapers has uh, a weekly uh, mm -hmm. So the Daily Monitor also publishes a vernacular sports magazine called the Nanda, whose operation has also been affected. The Red Pepper publishes uh, weekly magazines as well, one called Hello and Mother, whose name is the Nanda now. And both are also shut. So effectively, there are five newspapers that are closed and two radio stations. So today, at particular the Monitor, the management called a staff meeting at 10. When staff converged, the police sealed up the place, did not allow the employees to get into the premises, including the managing director who was restricted. So the management quickly decided that the staff will then be addressed in a car park adjacent to the main buildings, and that's where they converged. Uh, just as the meeting got underway, a tear gas spraying uh, truck of the police uh, passed menacingly past the staff and parked about 60 meters from the gathering and they turned the nozzle of the tear gas uh, spray towards the staff, but they didn't fire anything. And then shortly after, they, well, they arrived a truckload of police to reinforce those which were already on the ground. Okay, so has, has anyone been MD, hurt with the tear gas? No, not at all. They, no, they didn't fire tear gas. They only fired tear gas on Monday to okay. start activists who were together to, 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 to protest the closures. Okay. So when, when the trucks arrived and there was police reinforcement, the managing director hurriedly summarized his address to staff and asked them to leave the place immediately in order to avoid uh, any unprovoked confrontation. Mm -hmm. So, so today, the, can I ask you today? Um, I, um, I mean, we understand that as of now, there's a court order that is telling the police to leave, right? Have they left? The court, the court order was secured yesterday by the lawyer for the Monitor Publications, James Nangwala, and when they tried to serve it on the police on the premises yesterday, they declined and said it needed to be served on the legal department. And today, the police deputy spokesman uh, explained that they were unable to receive, they have not officially been served with the order to vacate the premises mm -hmm. because their head of legal department was in parliament answering to MPs over the closures. And, and, and what, what might be import, important to note is that the same magistrate who issued the original police search warrant is the one who withdrew the search warrant and issued this new one and said that the police had overstepped the mandate, which was prescribed by the initial warrant that she had, uh, mm -hmm. she had given them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the police have continued to dodge the receipt of this new uh, order of court and have continued to act in defiance. In fact, immediately after the monitor employees uh, dispatched, Mm -hmm. The police sealed off all the roads leading to the monitor publications and they put a yellow tape around the premises, mm -hmm. uh, signifying it was a scene of crime which should not be accessible to the public. Mm -hmm. I understand now this evening about 7 p.m., which is about an hour or so ago, they cleared the roads, allowed the traffic to begin flowing there again. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the reinforcement which was brought just as the monitor staff met in the morning uh, were leading the premises. Okay, so what is the Daily Monitor and you know all the other radio stations doing to fight back? What are you guys doing? Uh, at the management level, there is, of course, two friends which I can quickly speak about. One, of course, I know about is they are continuing to pursue the legal option. Uh, the lawyer of the company uh, was due to report back to court to the magistrate that her uh, order for the police to vacate has not been honored by the armed forces. And also, the managing director had spoken of continued transposing dialogue with government with the, uh, with the view of seeking immediate reopening of the newspaper.
papers as well as the two radio stations. All right. And um, Tabu, I, I want to ask you, did you guys expect this? I mean, you, you knew what sort of document you guys had. Did you guys expect this sort of outcome? Uh, not, not at all. Not, not, not this high-handed manner and uh, surprising closure. The president has been, President Kiwal Museven has been warning uh, since the last quarter of last year that she was going to close radio stations, she was going to close newspapers, she will continue to write what he called lies. Uh, but on this particular story, it, it was not anticipated that the government would respond in such a very aggressive manner. Because the, the, the letter is allegedly authored by the top spy master. He actually did acknowledge that he's the author of that letter. And so presently he is said to be out of the country in the United Kingdom. The, the government, it is understood if it took offense because of the content, would then have gone and pursued the general, the military general, and not clamp down in Libya. Because look here, the reason they gave they gave for going to court was in the warranty because they wanted to look at the document. Now when they arrived, the first thing they did was disabling the press and then taking the two registrations off air, mm -hmm. none of which were connected to the to the stated intent mm -hmm. of of uh, having an intrusion into the place. And remember last week the police did summon three monitor journalists, the two authors of the story and the managing editor, and they were inter interrogated uh, for three consecutive days. And they just left them and said, if they need, we will call you back. They didn't call them back. They said they, they, they had preferred charges of non-cooperation and failure to disclose information because the police wanted the journalists, one, to surrender to them a copy of the letter, and two, to to disclose the identity of the person who leaked it. Mm -hmm. And then it said, no, uh, we have confidentiality clauses that establishes the level of trust between us and our sources. And under the Ugandan press and journalists uh, act, they were obliged to protect their sources. So the police accused them of failing to cooperate mm -hmm. and refusing to disclose uh, the identities of the persons and went to court to seek an order compelling them to disclose this information to police, uh, which they also refused, which is then why on Monday the police went back to court and called a search warrant and declared monitor premises and red paper as a crime, as scenes of crime, and immediately had intrusion and took it over, and they were armed, they were armed as they are up to now. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, what are you guys doing now? I mean, you're a reporter for the Daily Monitor. Uh, how are you working? Are you working? But the, the, the first way to say is we are momentarily unemployed. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, we, of course, it's not running, the newspaper is not running, uh, the, the online operations is not printing anymore. The newspaper, a couple of days yesterday, precisely, did print from offsite. Mm -hmm. The quality of the paper was bad. But they came out and then immediately, uh, when, when the vendor started selling it, the management of Red Pepper uh, alleged that mm -hmm. the vendors were being harassing, harassed for having a copy because the allegation which police denied. Mm -hmm. So they, ha they didn't print again uh, last evening for today. And so nine of the two independent papers was actually on the market. And the thing is that no one has a clue how long this will go on mm -hmm. when they will be able to resume you know, printing. So there's a whole lot of a huge, calm, but tense situation. Right. Uh, and just to, to, to inform you that this evening, when a group of activists went to, to demonstrate at the monitor premises in support of media freedom, five of them were arrested and they are now in police detention. Mm. Okay. Um, so I guess that's a good point to bring up because I wanted to ask you, are there any groups that are fighting on your behalf um, for this matter? And also, what are the general people saying about this? Uh, obviously, from the, the, 
the campaign for media freedom has moved from the mainstream newspaper, as I to hear, and then it has gone on the defense line on the social media, on Facebook, on Twitter. There's uh, one more independent daily, which is the uh, which is the Observer newspaper, that continues to publish the stories uh, and get to the bottom. The only remaining daily newspaper is the New Vision, in which the government has majority uh, shares. And so it has limited uh, ability to effect the campaign or be the front line for this. Uh, individual organizations that are allied to either the media or the uh, protection of civil liberties and freedoms mm -hmm. have come out, condemned this. Today, the European Union uh, delegation in Uganda and the all the 27 countries issued a joint statement con uh, expressing deep concern about the closures. A couple of days ago, the American embassy did issue a statement condemning the closures. Uh, today, there was also a mention of the closures in the UK House of Lords. So there, there is a momentum locally and globally uh, towards uh, pushing for an opening uh -huh. of these closed media houses. All right. So um, my final question, um, I have to actually wrap up now. Um, I just got the cue from my producer. But um, like, what does this mean for Uganda? And you know, does this sort of signal like a hardening society un under um, Museveni's rule? It, it, sort of, it, it obviously means that the government is becoming uh, very intolerant to, to criticism, and particularly criticism from people who are serving or within government. Uh, but this not, mind you, it's not the first time the monitor has been closed. The second time the, 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 last, the second last one was in October 2002. And so, yes, monitor's relationship with the government has been dead of hating and, and love is your life. And so the fact that this time the government has come to close it again, uh, more than a decade after, uh, clearly shows the, 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 the government seven it has has reached the brim in terms of how much you can take of the independent media. Mm -hmm. And it probably signals how tough the times are going to be as Uganda drifts towards 2016, when it's going to hold the next general and presidential elections. So it is the beginning of narrowing of the political space, mm -hmm. so expression of dissenting opinion, uh, and probably with it, muddling of the free press and other forms of human rights. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I have one more question. This would be my final question. Um, what do you think will happen? Will uh, the company eventually hand over the source, or will you guys continue on like this? What do you think will happen? It's quite unlikely that the companies will, will submit the public disclosure of the particulars that the police want. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would want to imagine is that uh, there will be, as it is now, continued engagement with government. There is also going to be the involvement of international actors. There will be a, a lot, there will be people within government who think that closing these newspapers for a number of times or for a number of days would have weakened them financially which gives the, the, the government then a stronger arm to dictate terms for reopening. Um, I, I, I am of the considered view that somehow some moderates within government will then become the arbiters between the newspaper proprietors and the hardliners within government. So eventually, uh, the newspapers will reopen. Uh, the question is how long will it take before they reopen and how much in terms of losses with this company is actually, you know, in car. Mm -hmm. And there doesn't seem to be also the possibility that they'll be able to take government to court mm -hmm. and seek compensation for lost businesses due to the period of closure. So th those are the areas around which discussions, I guess, will be made in a government will seek to extract concession that the newspapers will need to turn down on their, uh, their reporting. And the greater issue to raise is how much independent and thriving will the private media be, mm -hmm. uh, knowing the ramifications of the government clampdown of the nature that is apparent now. 
All right, Tabu, thank you so much for joining joining us, and we're definitely um, behind you guys, and we hope that you guys can get back to work and things can clear up soon. All right, guys, that has thank been... Thank you very much, Tracy. Thank you, Tabu. That has been Tabu uh, Butagira, sorry, um, joining us from Uganda, and he's discussing the shutdown of the daily newspaper called The Daily Monitor, which is one of Uganda's top leading daily papers. All right, stay tuned. We have much more.